All right, guys, it's that time. It is Rick Ginn, and you are on the YouTube channel. And we talk about one thing here. We talk about wholesaling. Now, you might know a little bit of a background setting change here. Um, I didn't move, and I am not in my office studio. Um, actually, me and Zach are on the road this week. I'm down in sunny Miami um, taking care of some things here. So... But as usual, um, it doesn't matter where we are. We bring you the best, the latest, and the most up-to-date information on wholesaling. And today, we're talking about how to succeed as a new wholesaler step-by-step -by, -step by in 2023. And actually, you're going to be surprised with this video because I'm going to tell you the truth of how it really works. And I'm going to separate all the hype and all the, the gurus that tell you, um, you know, th this is it. This is how you do it. It's actually really simple. You know why? Because I'm an absolute expert on it. I've been doing this 21 years, and I'm here to tell you the fundamental, the fundamental things that are going to separate you from actually being successful in wholesaling and stuff you have to do on a daily basis, as opposed to all the hype, like, hey, I got to do this, I got to do that. And you know, you guys always say, hey, Zach, Rick, specifically, what do I need to do to actually make wholesaling work? And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're just going to cut all the other crap out and tell you step by step on how to do it. And honestly, it's nothing you haven't heard before, but I'm telling you, it's so simplified. If you do it this way, it'll give you much more clarity. And I find when you get clarity, you can accomplish any goal you want to do. But if you don't have clarity and you're not sure where to go and you're trying 3 million things, that's when you get overwhelmed, you get confused and you just quit wholesaling. That's why our industry has a 95% failure ratio because there's so many people throwing so many things at you and you're trying to figure out what works. Number one, before you even get into wholesaling and you want to take advice from someone, make sure they are active wholesalers. When I say active, make sure they are flipping wholesaling and doing it right now. I don't care how long they've been doing it. Because a lot of people use wholesaling as a stepping stone, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, I have no problem with that at all. But the problem is you get further away from wholesaling and say they're fix and flippers or they're just doing high-end projects, they lose the edge that gave them that they gained by being a wholesaler. And I've seen it happen over and over, meaning they were really good wholesaling 10 years ago, and then they've done nothing but coaching or whatever it is. And their fundamentals still work, but the mechanics of how to actually go out and get a deal in 2023, they have no idea because they've stopped doing it. And so you want to find someone that, number one, has a lot of experience. The more, the better, in my opinion, because they've been in up markets, they've been in down markets, they've been in all markets. And that's what you will find. You want to find someone that's actually still wholesaling. Most of the coaches and gurus on there, they just, most of them have just stopped wholesaling. Not all of them. But for the most part, if they're not active, even in their own state where they reside now, that's probably a good indication that you're probably going to get a lot of fluff in the program. And hey, they were great back in the day, but they lost the edge. Fix and flip. I just do high end. That's fine. But I've always kept my foot, like my pulse on wholesaling because I actually, I love wholesaling. I enjoy it. And to me, it's the greatest way to become Financially independent and more important freedom of your time is through wholesaling. So if you're down with that and you're okay, let's jump into it. I'm going to duck down here, give you a view where I'm at. Um, I'm near downtown Miami. If anybody's in there, give me a holler while you're on there. I'm going to duck down. You can see a few. It's got a, it's got a spoiling not being out there on the water and watching all these boats go by. You guys know I love boating and fishing. So, but Sometimes we just got to go out and take care of business. So I'm, I'm really down here on, on business. So, um, and uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be down, but we'll figure it out. So let's get into it. So what do you need to be truly successful as a wholesaler in 2023, especially starting out? So first and foremost, if you've never met me before, you don't know anything about it. Uh, first of all, let's just go on this live stream. You guys have the comment section. The reason I do the lives on the Rick Inn channel outside of the Flip With Rick channel, my son has a channel, Zach Inn, is because you guys get more exposure. So how can you connect with me? It's real simple. What we do here is free. This is the good news. I don't need your credit card. I don't need anything. Use the comment section. So you have a question, ask it. 
If you put it in there, there's a good chance I'm going to answer it because I have a smaller crowd and it's much more intimate and that's what I love. Number two, you'll see in the link under Rick in my comment where you can do a one-on-one. -on -one. And it's simple. If you've never even done a real estate deal, this is a great opportunity to network with someone like me. I've been doing this 21 years. I promise you there's not a question you can't ask me. I probably couldn't solve or haven't experienced it myself. And that goes a long way. I don't even care if you've never done a deal. Number one, you don't have to share your video. I don't care. Um, if you've never done a deal and you got a question asked, this is the place to do it. It's a safe place. And ask the question, I'm here. I'm not charging you a dime for it. So let's do it. The second thing, if you've never worked with us before and you're excited about wholesaling, I love that. But I'm here to give you the truth about wholesaling. And so many people dive in, you know, whip a credit card out of your out of your wallet to get started wholesaling. And that's not the way to do it. So if you truly want to get started and you have no experience to it, do the first thing on the bottom. I put it there, freewholesaling.com. Go there. It's a course me and my son created. It's 100% free. I promise you it's the most deepest, thorough wholesaling course in the world. It's specifically meant for wholesaling in the United States because it's very different outside of the United States. Although the theories could work, but the practicality, I don't flip properties outside the United States. So I can't tell you how to do it. So go through that. And there is a ton of modules. It's deep. It's got my 21 years experience. It's got Zach's six plus years experience. And we offer it all for free. And that will get you not only get you first deal, if you put the work in, it doesn't do it for you. You actually have to do the work, but can easily get you up to your first hundred grand. And from there, we can show you how to launch and move forward with it. Um, that's where you want to start on that. Now, so use those. And guys, on this video, dude, smash the like button. I don't know what else to tell you. It just gives me feedback that you guys are engaging and you like it. And honestly, it helps other people find places like freewholesaling.com. So they can get an education on how to get started wholesaling without having somebody pounce on them, taking tens of thousands of dollars from them. And if you want to form a relationship, that's really the best way to do it. So smash that like button. And for God's sakes, if you're watching this video, do me a favor. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Why? Because I do a lot of videos that I only give to my subscribers only. You got to be subscribed. And I like to give surprises out. So if you're subscribed, I want to add as much value as I can. I can't help you if you're not subscribed. You'll also get notifications when we go live. And I release recorded videos that I spend a lot of time and energy. No teleprompter. I just tell you how it is. I share deals I do. And this is the place I do it on the Rick and channel. So now that we got all that business out of the way, let's jump in. Let's talk about real secrets of being a successful new wholesaler in 2023 and this isn't going to be your average like stream, I'm telling you. So the first thing you have to understand is a lot of you think that you have to have this just gobs of money or I got, my dad's got to load me up with a hundred grand or anything like that. AK, just let you know when Zach started wholesaling, no money. Like, so if you think you have to have a financial war chest, I'm telling you, it doesn't do you any good in wholesaling. And honestly, that's where you start to get knee deep in giving away your family's money to a guru or a coach because the truth in wholesaling is the most eyeballs are on the newbies, the people that just start out wholesaling. They're the ones the most excited. You sell them the dream. They're having financial challenges. They have a boss they don't like. They have a job they don't like. And honestly, that's most of America. And hey, this guy or gal is going to show me how to do wholesaling. I just got to give them five or 10 grand and we're going to get it all figured out. That is just to start your problems. The money will not solve your problem. And I'm going to show you why and I'm going to show you how to fix it. So if you go, hey, I can't do wholesaling. I don't have money. Good. You're perfect. You're in the perfect spot for it. <clears throat> to be honest with you, I find the people that are most successful in wholesaling, they start off broke. I'm one, Zach's one. I've had thousands and thousands and thousands of people on this channel. If you don't believe me, go over to our Facebook group, Wholesaling Houses for Real, and check out all the testimonials. I don't ask for testimonials. They just put it up there because they feel they want to give back. And that's how you know a community is for real. When people just testimony after testimony and they've never asked them for a dime, that's authentic and that's what you want. 
most of the people started out, started out with zero money. Now I've seen a lot of people start in wholesaling and they'll give a coach five or 10 grand. And then the, here's what most coaches do. I'm just going to tell you, they're going to go teach you how to spend money to make leads. But here's the challenging part is you don't know how to talk to people yet. You don't have any experience and those are going to be the most expensive leads you ever do. So if you spend 10 grand on marketing, 10 grand on a guru, now you're 20 K out or you do your first deal. You made 10 grand. Your coach is like, yes, you did it. No, you didn't. You're still in the hole. And honestly, you do not have enough experience to talk to people to duplicate that exact success. So the way me and Zach teach is, number one, I don't care if you have money or not. You just got to have an incredible attitude and you're going to have to have even a better work ethic. If you can bring me those two things, I'll show you how to progress because I'm going to give you such exposure to this business. By the time you get to doing paid leads, you're going to be a master. And you need to be a master when you start paying for leads because you can't screw them up. They're too expensive. So why not figure out how to make money when you have no money? Because that's how you get the exposure in wholesaling. And that's really the truth. And that's why we have such a high failure ratio on all these courses. They get you so excited. You pay it. You think all your problems are solved. And then you got to find out, oh, I got to spend three or $5,000 in mail. Or I got to do pay per click. Or I got to do this campaign and that campaign. I didn't know about this. Oh, and I got to do it for three months. And all of a sudden you start spending money and maybe you have a spouse or a family. I'm like, I, I don't understand. I thought you were just paying the guy five grand. You're good. He goes, no, no, no. He or she told me how to do this. And see, you didn't have the education and now you're stuck. And the money just keeps going out and it's hard to even get to the break even point. I'm not going to teach that strategy because honestly, like one in 10 maybe might make it doing it that way. And it's going to take a lot of guts to move forward with that. So, um, so here's the reality. So if it's not money in your bank account, that truly makes you what you do. Remember, the beauty of wholesaling is you eliminate, you minimize risk. You don't completely eliminate and you maximize your chance to make a huge profit and really get freedom of your time. And that's how you want to do it. If I had to pay cash for every one of the houses I bought, I would have never made it in this business. And I got to be honest, I was living on the edge when I did wholesaling because I was at max capacity. I was corporate job. I had a big mortgage. I thought it was a big mortgage at the time. I had two young children and I just felt hopeless. College education, did everything my parents told me. Dude, it didn't work out. It didn't hit. So at 33, I had an epiphany. I'm like, there's got to be a better way. I found wholesaling by complete freaking accident. And honestly, it's probably been the greatest tool ever been put in my life. And that's why I'm so adamant about it. I am not adamant about this to sell you courses or make money. Yes, I do, I do cover our costs with some affiliate stuff we do. I only recommend products that I actually use in my business. I've been doing this 21 years. And honestly, I make my money doing deals. And by the way, I'm going to show you, we do deals with our members here because they love doing deals and why not? So if it's not money in your bank account, back to this, it's work in your effort that actually gets the deals. That's the secret. See, so many people try to tell you, if you pay me, I'm going to show you the secret. Here's the secret, guys. This is the secret. This is every secret. If Guru just put this on the front of every one of their panels, which I do. I tell you from day one, if you don't believe me, go over to freewholesaling.com because I'm going to smack you in the mouth and say, you are going to have to bust your butt. Your effort's going to have to be so ginormous and you're going to have to discipline yourself to get this done. It's going to be painful. It's going to be wildly uncomfortable. But if you can get through it, there's so much on the other side for you. The question is, do you want to get to the... Everybody wants to get to the other side. The question is, do you have the work effort and are you going to put in the hard work to get to that other side? Listen, if you guys ever work out, if you stretch, if you run, you lift weights, let's face it. I'm not a big fan of doing it. I don't enjoy the physical activity. It hurts. I sweat. I got to take time out of my day. I got to wake up early. I got to stay up late. I got to eat better. I got to hydrate. In the moment, it's not fun. But I know that discipline will get me the end result I want. So here's the key is, if this sounds a little uncomfortable for you, it's the truth. That's why. But that uncomfortable will make you so comfortable down the road it's worth it. You got to ask yourself, do you just want to be comfortable and stay in your normal life right now? 
And knowing it's just going to be the same every day and the odds of it changing are slim to numb or you feel like you have no power of it. Or are you willing to get uncomfortable, somewhat wildly uncomfortable? You're not physically being stretched. I'm not making you lift 500 pounds, but I'm going to make you change the way you operate. And you are going to do actions you've never done before. It's going to feel odd. It's going to feel weird. But if you can focus at that end result, the payoff is huge. Because then you have an abundance mindset. You don't have to depend on anybody else. You're in control. You can do what you want. Heck, if you want to come over to Miami and hang out on Miami Beach, I can run my business from anywhere in the world. And I know that for a fact because I've been doing this 21 years. So... I'm one of these people that actually has walked the walk. I've had the experience. I've done this. I've done it locally. I've done it virtually. I do it all over the country with you guys. And this is why we're at this point right now. So moving on. The secret to successful wholesalers is always the output. There is no secret. There is no hack. There's no tiny little AI piece of software I'm going to sell you that's going to solve all your problems. Guys, I've heard this crap for over 20 years. When you hear the word secret in wholesaling, get out of the room because there's no such thing as a secret. That's the secret. Why? I've tried to buy. I've tried to use. I've tried to manipulate every secret, every hack. And I'm here to tell you, even if it's a secret, it will close so fast because the gurus will sell every secret. It won't last for long. And occasionally you get a slight competitive advantage, but for the most part, that secret actually becomes your Achilles heel, meaning it's not going to work and then you're going to try to push it and it won't work. So what am I telling you? Stop trying to buy it. If you hear the word secret or I've got, I've got a super secret to do it, it's BS. It doesn't work. The secret is I'm going to part you with your money and I'm going to give you the secret and then I'm just going to make you feel real good for the next few months. And then I'm going to move on and find 10, 10 to 20,000 other people that are going to like fall for what you did. And that's honestly, I could do four hours on this topic alone. I've seen honestly thousands and thousands of marketing tips, marketing strategies in wholesaling and every one of them that have a paid program, they all try to, I have this secret new method. And then they usually do a fancy little acronym with it. Uh, and then they go, Hey, let me show you how to do it. And by the time you buy it, get it, implement it, it's probably already being legislated out. I could go down the list in the last year of all the ones that have come up in wholesaling. It's absolutely ludicrous. And nine times out of 10, even if it is a secret strategy as a brand new wholesaler, you don't have the skill set to have the conversation. You don't understand what's going on, and often you can get in legal and huge trouble by trying these strategies. There's a lot of them going out right now where you basically put a property under contract. They call it a fake contract That's what, because that's what it is, and then they teach you to go out and how to sell it full price as a realtor, and honestly, if you're going to do that strategy, I'm not even going to mention the word because I don't want you to look it up. That's called being a realtor. Go get your realtor's license. I don't teach that stuff. I could show you over and over again. So what I'm telling you is if you hear the word secret or I got a strategy, nobody else has used it and I want to sell it to you, run guys. There's no secrets in wholesaling. It's been around a long, long, long time, long before I did it. And it'll be here long after I stop. Do I, I'm never going to stop doing it, but when I'm done doing it, it is. You see, here's the secret. Every guru, every coach learned it from somebody else. But the, the latest trend today is let me take an old strategy and repackage the marketing name on it and say I invented it on my own. It has been plagued in the last 10 years. Horrid. I, I see these words and phrases. I'm like, I know exactly what they're doing. And is why are we doing it? Listen, if you buy a property subject to, subject to has been around forever. It's not invented. It's not trademark. I'm here to tell you it's been around forever. Banks have known about it. Sellers, buyers have known about it. Is it more mainstream now? Absolutely. Creative financing has been around forever. Lease options have been around forever. No, a, a, a novation, that's just a legal strategy. It's, it's not something that was invented. And so when somebody remarkets, somebody comes out with a brand new name, 
There's nothing new in wholesaling. It's the exact same. You see, a lot of people will tell you wholesaling is illegal across this country. And yes, there are some very, very few challenging states. For the most part, wholesaling is 100% legal across this country. So one of the latest trends you'll find out too is watch out, it's illegal. The only reason they're telling you is number one, they get eyeballs on it, which I even watch it because I, I want to see you know, what, this, what they're saying is. But the reality is they'll never very rarely show you the state statute in the bill. And nine times in the bill's written so poorly, it's just there to discourage you and promote realtors through NAR, which is National Association of Realtors. There's no way to enforce it. So a lot of times it hinges on advertising, stuff like that. But here's what you need to do. Stop taking people's word for it and just read the bill yourself. It's simple. All these statutes are online and you can easily look them up. You can see who sponsored it. You can see when it was signed. And we got to stop doing what the rest of the media does is just take everyone's word for it. So the scare tactics, one of the big ones that you got me. When someone's trying to scare you with something in real estate, I promise you there's a solution. They're going to try to sell you on the back end every time. Now, if the solution actually fixes it, I'm fine with it. But the reality is you need to know your, all your options if you want to do it. And one of the options is becoming a licensed realtor to fix the problem. You're only getting half the story there. And that's my challenge with it. If you want to do that, then that's fine. But just become educated because getting a real estate license has a certain obligations and things that you have to follow. You also get an additional boss. You get oversight. And no matter, even if someone complains and you did nothing wrong, you have to answer to it. And you got to involve your broker and it can get messy. But the real challenge of becoming a licensed realtor, other than trying to beat some statutes in certain states, is they're training you to be a realtor. And guess what? They trick a lot of people to, to switch teams from wholesale to realtor because they get their fees and it's just like this big cult. And I'm not a big fan of it. I have no problems with realtors. I use realtors every day in my business. But why, if I wanted to be a baker, why would I go get my law license? And that's basically what you're asking a wholesaler to go get their realtor's license. If you think you solve a state statute or law, that's fine. Just make sure you read it, consult an attorney, review it with your title company and make sure it's a good fit for you and understand the legal obligations and the ethics that you're going to have to uphold. And it's going to severely hamper your marketing ability as a wholesaler. That isn't even disputed. It's guaranteed fact because one of the contingencies of being a realtor is you have to tell everybody you're a licensed professional realtor. And here's the funny part is you have to disclose you're a professional realtor, even if you've never even done a deal before. So anyways, don't get me started on that. So let's get back to the basics and simplify things. If you know that there's no secret, if you know you don't technically need a license to do it, and you know it doesn't matter how much money or how much money your dad has or your mom has or your aunt does, you got to get back down to the basics. How can we get a deal? So step one's really simple. We have to find motivated sellers. Rick, what do you mean by motivated sellers? Simple. So if you want to learn how to do it, go over to freewholesaling.com. I, like, I go in depth on this one. Here's how I can sum it up. Everybody, most people that put their house that want to sell their house, they want to sell their house. It's 100%. Everybody wants to get rid of it if they have a desire to sell the house, right? So the key word here is want. Here's the difference of a motivated seller really summed up, make it simple. We are looking for the ones that want to sell their house that need to sell their house. Very few people need to sell their house, but everybody wants to sell it. Do you understand the difference in there? Listen to the words, I want. I want, a, I want, I want $100 billion in my bank account. I want a six pack. I want to go back 20 years in life and redo it all. We all want it. That's never a debate, but who needs it? Who needs to it? So what type of person would need to sell their house? I got behind on the mortgage payment. I need to move quickly. My renter trashed the house. You have to have some sort of catapulting event. And, and to be honest with you, I bought houses with no outside event. They just want it done. But here is the qualifying event. They wanted certainty in their life and they want it done right then and there. That is what we call a motivated seller. And that's a person that needs to sell their house. They didn't want to go through five realtors. They didn't want to go to the walkthrough. Maybe they don't like realtors. Oh my God, I got my realtor's license. You're me, I don't like realtors, Rick. Boom, I'm done. I got my realtor's license. This person's not going to sell me their house. 
So understanding that difference, here's where most wholesalers get it wrong. They try to convert everybody who wants to sell their house and they think they're going to wind up with a person that needs to sell their house and that type of deal. It ain't going to work. And anything is going to drive you nuts. And now you are a pseudo realtor because trying to convince people that want to sell their house to sell it for a discounted price, it, I tell you, there's a lot easier ways in your life to spend your time and make money. And that is a recipe for disaster. How do I know? Because I tried it. It doesn't work. And one of the trends you see all people that are trying to tell you how to do wholesaling is just go straight to the real estate agents is the best way to do it. Some truth to that, but the reality is if you're brand new and you don't know the lingo, you haven't had enough experience talking to people, you're going to get yourself in a bind very quickly because you're not experienced enough to deal with seasoned experienced realtors because what's their goal? To sell the property for top dollar, period. They don't want to hear about an assignment of contract. And here's a little secret. They don't like wholesalers. It's just a proven fact. Why? Because they're taught in real estate school about us. We're bad people, really bad people. We're not. They just don't understand us. Now, I'll be honest with you. Some wholesalers treat realtors like garbage, and that's not good for our business, and it gives us all a bad name. If we could find a way to all work together and help each other out, this would be a different story. But the reality is when you go over into realtor land with little to no experience, trying to expect to get a deal of a motivated seller, it's brutal. And that's why we teach you at freeholdsling.com, we teach you how to focus on motivated sellers that need to sell their house and get them off market. Why? Because it's your highest success for chance. Now, here's the catch. It's very painful up front. It's uncomfortable and you're gonna need a tremendous amount of volume. Why are you gonna need volume? Think about this for a second. You need volume because you don't have the experience by going through thousands of sellers, you're going to gain an upper hand on how to talk to sellers and you're going to become much more confident. Number two, the quantity is going to give you a chance. So many people think they can make 50 phone calls and get a deal out of it. It's just not the truth. And honestly, if that's your mentality going into wholesaling, you're set up for absolute failure. My other favorite ones, I'm just going to hire a cold caller off the bat. I got all these companies. Who do you think owns all these companies, guys? Deeply experienced wholesalers that teach wholesaling for a living. Why? Because they can make money on the back end. And here's the average lifespan of someone hires a cold caller with no experience. You're going to get a month or two into it because you don't know how many calls they need to make, what you're looking for, are you recording their conversations, are you feeding them the right list, and so on. So understand it. You have to put in the work. So wholesaling, for full disclosure, is... It's all about it's all about doing the hard work up front. So here's the secret. I'm going to show you. 21 years, like I'm looking at it at 30,000 feet above. If me and Zach teach you how to do the brutal hard work up front, it's going to be painful. It's going to seem tough. And if you put your head in and grind in and do it, you should come out getting a deal. Now, if you get someone who goes, listen, I'll show you how to just chase off MLS, all their phone numbers on there. You don't have to skip trace. You make 30, 40, 50 calls, you're going to get it done. It's going to sound super easy up front, almost too sexy for you. And then you get into it and you get nowhere. So what happens, though program are designed to take your money and make it seem super simple, but they're brutal. There's a very, very low success rate as opposed to doing wholesaling the right way there's no wrong way, but there's an easier way is do the hard work up front, find the off-market properties of motivated sellers that need to sell their house and go through the pain to learn how to do it. And when you come out and you get a deal, the light bulb goes on your head and go, I know how to do this now. And now I'm getting experience talking to people and now I'm very confident. And that leads you to the next deal, the next deal. And then as you collect deals and you actually start making a profit and you build your self-confidence, now you can go into some of the paid programs. And the key with the paid program is you have to have experience. Otherwise, you're going to burn through leads and it's going to burn out and you're going to run out of money. And so a wholesaling program from a coach that starts out saying, you got to use this paid service. Why? Because it's easy for them. Because if you spend $5,000, they can put the leads across your desk and then it's up to you if you can convert the lead. And the reality is you probably don't have the confidence and the skill sets to take them all down. 
So you're always going to be the blame. So the way we do it was we teach it the other way around. And honestly, if you'll go through and make thousands of phone calls, do the stuff we asked you to do, the reverse driver dollars, pulling the government list, overcoming um, resistance with persistence we teach on the list, man, by the time you get to the paid list, it's like a piece of cake. So there's no shortcut in wholesaling. If you can pay somebody $100,000, you are going to have to go through all the pain everyone else has to go through. The question is, can you endure it? And the, the, the overwhelming majority is 95% of coaches fail and they always blame the student. And sometimes it is the student's fault, but the reality is they were set up for a program that was never, ever going to make it work for them. It was 100% set up for the coach to make work. And I'm a strong advocate of working with motivated sellers, getting the right list and putting in the time. And if you ask me, Rick, how many phone calls I have to make before I get a deal? you're probably in trouble. I'm just telling you. Some people can do it one call, some take 10,000. Depends on your market, it depends on the time of year, it depends greatly on your list, and it depends mostly on your work ethic and your attitude and your unwavering commitment to say, I'm never getting up and I'm gonna make this happen. So, number one, we gotta find motivated sellers. I'm almost done, guys, and we'll get into the lives, I promise. Okay, then, we get into the lists, and you have two choices in lists. Obviously, we all know about the paid list. You guys know um, I, I use Batch and PropStream both. I've been doing this 21 years. You don't have to start out doing it. But if you don't have a lot of time, it is a good service to do, and I'll show you how to use it. It's real simple. Actually, we teach you how to use it in freewholesaling.com, and you can get a trial seven-day period. I'll show you how to get it at listrei.com. That's simple, easy. Now. The free list is where I want you to start. Why? Because I love to test people. Because if you think it's hard just getting the list, that's just the start one. Remember, I told you it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to fall. It, it doesn't hurt you. It just feels uncomfortable. You know why it feels uncomfortable? Because you've been doing the same old thing at your old job or your old life, and you're trying to take that mindset and put it in the wholesaling, and it doesn't work. Think about it. If that attitude, that work ethic stuff didn't get you what you want, why do you think it's going to work in wholesaling? That's why it feels so uncomfortable. Here's the secret I found over years as I've become wildly successful is success requires you to become wildly uncomfortable. And I use the word wildly because if you can't deviate from that difference, it means you're not going to change. I promise you becoming a wholesaler is going to physically change you and it's for the better because you're going to have to step up and do things that you weren't, either you didn't know how to do, which is a big part of us, but now that I'm gonna tell you how to do it, some of you are like, well, I don't know if I wanna do that. And so if you won't do a government list, I don't even have to worry about doing wholesaling because in my opinion, that's the easiest part of the job. Now, we talk about our earn list, the list you gotta go out, you gotta go get the probates, you gotta get the water shutoffs, you gotta get um, the fire damage properties, you gotta get the code violations. You're not the only person chasing those lists, so you have to be creative, you're going to have to have tenacity and to overcome resistance, you're going to have to beat it with persistence. If you can get through that fire, we just keep moving through the journey. Now, the people that work best with me is exactly like, okay, I'm going to go get that list. And they go, Rick, my God, you were right. They beat me up about it and they want to meet me with a lawyer and do this. I'm like, okay, what'd you do? He's like, I kind of froze. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, okay, well, let's regroup. And I just say, we got to keep moving forward. You got a roadblock in front of you. Do you want to quit or do you want to go forward? Most people in reality in their old job, they just quit. It's just statistically proven people quit. That's what I'm talking about why wholesaling is so different. I've already talked about paid list to free list. I always focus on the free list with you. It has nothing to do with money. So many people are like, oh, the free list. It's not about the word free. It's about are you going to put in the work to go actually get it? To get that list, very few people have, and the list that gives you an advantage to find motivated sellers over anyone else. If it takes you a week or two weeks to get the list, are you persistent enough to get it? If you get the list, wholesaling is gonna be fun. If you struggle with the list, you're probably not gonna go very far. And I can tell you the truth here because I don't have a massive paid coaching course. I just tell you how it is. By the way, I give absolutely everything for free. For over three years, I've given you everything for free. I haven't changed anything. I've just added more options for you guys. That's it. Everything's always going to be free. I want everyone, 
regardless of their financial situation, go out and get a wholesale deal. Not only that, earn up to a hundred grand minimum. I've never changed that. That's why I always did that first. And I want you to understand that. Next thing is after, after, up, uh, yeah. So once we have our lists, we pick our marketing medium. I'm not going to go in like all the details of it. There's so many free ways to do it. I like cold calling because it, you don't have to get in a car. You can make thousands of calls. Yes, you can use dialers. I'm not going to get in all that today. But the idea is get your contracts, get them locked up. And then on step three, simplify it. Sell that contract to a cash buyer for an assignment fee. Yes, an assignment fee. Here's the secret, guys. True wholesaling is you're selling your contract. You are not selling the property. The contract is the key to the property, and most cash buyers want to look at it, but we sell the contract. You can't go outside those terms, and if you send out a mass email list with all pictures and stuff, you are now in realtor land, and what comes to you, you kind of deserved it because someone taught you to do it the wrong way. It's just the truth. Step four, just pick up your check. Honestly, you get a wire, but sometimes we get checks. It doesn't matter as long as it's going in your bank account. And the idea is just repeat it over and over. And the, here's the truth. Anything that gets in your way of everything I just said to you, steps one, two, three, and four, it's killing you in wholesaling, period. If you are constantly being distracted by this and that, you are not going out and getting the correct list, finding motivated sellers, writing contracts, and getting them sold to your cash buyers. Everything else is a human distraction. Here's the secret, guys. Other than a cell phone, maybe a computer, or honestly, not even a computer, access to the internet, you go to the library and do this business. Those are the only required tools in this business. Everything else is optional. Everything is, okay, I, I want to do it faster. Okay, here's a paid service where you can do this. It's 100 bucks a month. It'll make it a lot easier, okay? How do I get skip traces for the best price? I don't know, because guys, I only focus on wholesaling. I do not go out and build software products and tie my time up on how can I make money off wholesalers. And I have no problem. As long as you're providing value to the world, knock yourself out. Just understand you're going to compete with the big boys. I like to use highly big, reputable companies that have customer service reps and I can trust with my credit card. And that's why we use the companies that we recommend. So, um, and here's... <laughs> So here's what I see. Um, a lot of you guys are like this. Rick, I, I got to put the perfect offer together. No such thing as a perfect offer. You're wasting your time. The reality is you have to talk to people. You have to connect with them. You got to build massive amount of rapport. And then you got to kind of play with them. And that's what we call a negotiate. There's no perfect offer. So, so many people in wholesaling try to write the perfect offer so they can just get a yes. And it's ridiculous. I actually do it the opposite way. And I can show you how to do it. If you think you're going to write the perfect offer like a realtor does and try to get a yes or a simple like 5% counter, I am not the guy for you. You're wasting your time on those. Remember, I'm only looking for people that need to sell their house. The ones that want, they immediately go to a realtor or I get a marketing fee or I, I put them with the right person. Because I want to help people. And I'm only looking for a certain type of property. And then all people are like, hey, Rick, what's the secret to like your marketing list? Which one should I do? I share it all. There is no secret. Remember, I told you if there's no secret, then don't go find it because I promise you someone's always going to sell you the secret and you have to understand that. And guys, here's the simple part. It's all free at freewholesaling.com. Just go over there. It's all there. It will always be there. It's never going to change. I've done this for three years. I've put it out there and I haven't changed it and it's set in stone. And here's the best part is me and Zach constantly add to it. I don't, I'll never take away. I just add to it. And I'm here to tell you, go over there and take advantage of it. So all you have to do is put in your email and then you set and then you go through it. And the course is really designed to where you, you watch a video, you download a contract, you watch instructions on how to do detailed instruction, then you go out and take action. And then you come back and report and you usually get good information, bad information. And guess what? I tell you to do it again until you get it right. And eventually it gets burnt so in your brain and your nervous system that you figure it out and you keep going on. Most wholesaling courses, you have to understand that you have to have that level of implementation for it to register with you. 
And honestly, a lot of people buy whole sign courses and do nothing. And there's nothing anyone can do to protect that type of person. Just don't be that person. So if you go there, treat it like a $10,000 course I sold you, wink, wink, and put your energy into it. Understanding there's no shortcut. There's no secret. Rick told me I'm going to have to get wildly uncomfortable, make this word. It's not going to hurt me. It's just I'm going to have to stretch my mind and how I operate. And then I'm going to move forward and I'm going to take action. So don't read it all the way to the end because you'll be watching it for a few months because it's the deepest, most thorough content out there. Go out. We start with the marketing, getting your list. Go get your list and then go out there and contact these sellers. And honestly, the more you do it and the higher your quantity, the, the more you're going to learn, the more confident you're going to come and your better odds of getting a deal. So remember, I'm going to make it tough up front because I know the truth and how this game works. Wholesaling is tough. You get resistance up front and it seems hard, but once you find that right seller, it's super easy to sell. A lot of the courses out there, they want to say, hey, just go to MLS, just, re just reach out to agents. It's real simple. The last thing I ever want you to do as a brand new wholesaler is to reach out to agents day one. You don't know the verbiage. You don't have enough experience. And these people don't want to work with you. And you're going to find this out real quickly. And what seems super easy, all the data in there, it just doesn't go anywhere. And I've watched people go six, seven months a year. And like, Rick, I didn't get anywhere. And I just tell you, go over to freewholesaling.com. I tell you exactly how to do it. You can't skip uncomfortable, especially wildly uncomfortable. There is no shortcut. There is no secret. There is no hack. That is my big reveal today. And I want you to understand that. So go over to freewholesaling.com. And that's it. I got to kind of come up for air here. because Sometimes I get on a rant. And... Um, I get going. So guys, if you have a questions, put it in the comment section and then we'll jump on the lives here. Um, I got some time here, so let's, let's go. Um, let me run through here. Um, awesome. Nick says that the Grant Cardone's hotel in the background. I don't, I don't even know if he owns a hotel. I know he's lots of plenty of apartments, but, um, if I see him, I will, I will share his information. I know he's close around somewhere, but um, ask Grant Cardone about being wildly uncomfortable. That man understands that part of it. And I don't agree with all his tactics, but the reality is he teaches a ton of stuff about real estate investing, not wholesaling. And I'm going to be honest, going to Grant Cardone for wholesaling is like going to Tony Robbins for wholesaling. They're not going to figure it out. And this is the problem with some of the guru courses. These people have great intentions and they change a lot of people's lives. But do you really think, real, he, Grant Cardone admits he does not do wholesaling nor has he ever done it. So why would you go into it? I love Tony Robbins. Go to him for wholesaling. He, uh, Tony Robbins understands wholesaling. He's consulted a lot of people on it. It's just not his vehicle. So if you take a $10,000 business mastery course, on, they're not going to teach you that. They're just going to teach you basic business. So it's, it's so important you go with someone that actually does the business and commits to it. But um, let's see. Um, what's up, Emily? She said she's very motivated. That's awesome. Um, I'm glad you connect with us. And Emily, make sure you subscribe and make sure you, you say, uh, just give me a like to the button. I'm sorry. It's, it's been a long day. And uh, we can go from there. So uh, Christina says, hey, Rick, I need to know how to get a property under contract before I wholesale. Do I get the property under contract? Go over to freewholesaling.com. So I love your energy and the excitement, and I want you to get a property under contract, but you got to understand to go out and find these motivated sellers and where to get them. So my biggest recommendation is off-market properties. Going and meeting with realtors with zero experience as a wholesaler is one of the hardest things to do. Trust me, I know this very well. <clears throat> I had challenges two and three years in the business doing this technique. And I'm here to tell you, it seems really easy up front and it sells a lot of courses, but the reality is <clears throat> it has a very, very low success rate <clears throat> because this requires tack, experience, and your ability to really connect with realtors. And a lot of realtors, the only wholesalers they want to work with are ones that are established and been in the business for a long time. So how do I get past that? You can't get past that. They all want a proof of funds. They don't like assignment of contracts and they want full retail price. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few in there that leave a scud missile, like a really bad property, but I'm talking, you're going to have to get through thousands of them 
on a monthly basis and it's hard to do. So I don't want to set people up for failure. So go over there, Christina. I'll show you how to do it. I'll give you a couple other options um, to get that going. Let me see here. Or what else we got? Um, and guys, network. Feel free to network in the comments. See, there's a lot of wonderful people on here. Um, I don't vet everybody for business. I'll show you like how we do that later in the stream. But um, let's get it going. Uh, what's up, Nick? Um, Ralph wants to go say, hey, what's some tips on virtual wholesaling? So once again, go over to freewholesaling.com. I can go in deep, deep on it. But do your research before you do it because you can pick whatever market you want. If you have a market where you've previously lived, maybe somewhere possibly like you lived with your parents or like you grew up in an area, that's a great place to start because you have familiarity and you understand it. But you want to find something that's got a good population base. I like 100,000 or more because there's a lot of cash buyers where the populations are. When you get in the small populations, 50, 50K and under, it gets hard to find people to invest in these neighborhoods because there's just not a lot of activity there. And the second thing is you want to look at the average price points. You can go to Zillow. You can go to Trulio. You can almost go anywhere. You can use Prop Stream Batch and find out what the average price is. And you want to find price points that are reasonable. So starting off on a million dollar price points is not going to be a great market to wholesaling. My recommendation, everyone's got a different one, but 400 and below. 250 preferably because there is a high demand for those types of entry level properties and that's where you're going to find the most cash buyers but honestly pick the market that you believe you're going to have the best success in but population and average price points is where i would start so do your research on that so um and what says are you running the 30-day wholesaling challenging on currently it starts in june and actually, me and Zach have prepared for it. This is going to be the greatest year ever with it. We have all new revamped videos. We've done everything. And we've mo we've modernized it. I know we just did it a year ago, but 2023. And we got some exciting prizes. And the whole goal of this, guys, is not to create a ton of work for me and Zach, which it does. But I enjoy doing it. Why? Because it excites you. It stimulates you. And if I can get you to take action and go get a great deal, I've done my job. And honestly, last year, we just thought we were going to give away some prizes. It'd be kind of some great content. And it wildly exceeded our expectations. You guys got so many deals under contracts. Me and Zach had to dig deep to like figure out how we were going to reward everyone. So we have some really cool ideas, which we're going to share with you. So, And it's all set in sequential order. Every day is going to have a new video. And we've just recently done this. And we're actually still finishing it, working on it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Like We take a lot of pride in this because... I don't give you old recycle stuff. Hey, listen, everybody knows me and Zach released the absolute most content. That's not even a question. So why would we do a challenge and not step up and give you fresh 30 days? I can give you stuff I did five years. I can give you stuff I did 20 years ago. As I said, I'm active in wholesaling and I want to share the information for you. So yes, June 1, that's coming. I don't know what day of the week that starts. I got to figure that out. So um, we'll kind of go from there. So Let's jump on. Let's do the lives. So uh, I'm going to run left to right here, um, and you guys can pop up. So Nick, you there? Nick. Nicky. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay, man. How you doing, man? Uh, good. I got, a, I got a bunch of uh, probate letters sent off, 120 of them today. Uh, wow. Okay. I'm going to try to see if... Uh, my local market has anything to offer and then uh, I'll start sending them to uh, bigger cities, probably Nashville, Jacksonville, some of those areas. So uh, some of my questions that I have as far as uh, the probates, like um, how many people do I need to contact? By, like how many deals am I going to get out of like a hundred letters? Like, do I need to send out 500, a thousand to get a deal? So, probates is going to be one of the exceptions to the rule here. So um, I'm an expert on probates because I've done a lot. And when I say a lot, I've done over 300 plus, specifically mm -hmm. targeting probate. Now, understanding, well, Rick, you do thousands and thousands of deals. I'm here to tell you, you're not going to do hundreds of deals of probate right off the bat. And honestly, probate is a very small niche market. 
it's not ginormous. So probate's not, it's not truly about how many letters you send out, okay? You've got to get the absolute right list. Here's the key with probates is probates is not a scalable event. So there's over 3,500 counties in this country. The logistics to try to do, you know, an enormous amount of country, say you want to do 50 counties, yeah. it, would eat, it would eat you alive in cost. It, it, you would have to hire so many people in logistics. Um, it's too hard. So start in the county that you're doing. Either you're doing it, are you doing it locally or virtually? Uh, I'm doing it locally. Um, I'm doing uh, three counties here in Nebraska. I, I figure uh, Grand Island, Lincoln, Omaha, Lincoln, Omaha are close enough. I can drive to, to check out the properties, et cetera. So my suggestion is always do the county that you're doing your most business in or say if you're starting it out. Yeah. Because it's – so was it hard to get the information for the probates in your county? Uh, I'm using PropStream. No, it was pretty easy. Um, I did run into some difficulties because I'm not sure if True People Search had all the correct information. I have a couple of questions regarding that too, but I'll go ahead and let you finish your first so, let me, let, so here's one of the things I'm telling you right now, because you're talking about quantity and probate. It's not going to work out for you. I'm just, okay. <laughs> the, the key with probate is the more precise information you get, the better your results going to be. Now okay. I'm not knocking what we use with listrei.com with um, prop stream, but that's pre probate. That's okay. so what that means is there was a death certificate and somebody owned a property in that County. And that list works, but I don't pull that list every month. And I've already told you guys, I could tell you that because it's not a perfect list. Now I find a lot of deals. There's a lot of properties that don't actually have to go through probate that you seem would be a good fit. And that one's great for it. But the best list you can get derived from your County records and either you get them in person, go down there and just ask like mm -hmm. just be super nice and Hey, and, but you got to be persistent. Or you get it online. And yeah. that is going to be your best result because on most counties, on average, you're going to have between 40 and maybe 75, 80 probate leads. That's it. And yeah. the smaller the county you are, the, I, I have one county, like if we get 10 or 12, it's amazing. Okay. So like the quantity, like it doesn't matter to me. I just need you to get, in the beginning, it's about getting one probate and mm -hmm. you're not going to get hundreds of phone calls. It's not going to happen. So mm -hmm. I'll, we do on average, uh, our average county is about 75 leads a month. Okay. I, I do three. Now I do it in my local market because I control it. I do work with people all over the country that does probates and I show them my exact same system. Yeah. All I need to phone is to ring one or two times. That's all you need. That's mm -hmm. it. It's not, it's like, it is not taxing. If you have a full-time job, this is the easiest way to do it. It's the cheapest way to do it. Yeah. The key with probate is the exact information. I like your pre-probate strategy, but- it's, it's kind of a spray method and mm -hmm. because it's, it's a list you use through a service. It's not foolproof. It works, but you can't pound that list every month because you're not going to get the results you yeah. want. It's not designed mm -hmm. for that. So if you can get and get that information from your courthouse, if you have to manually physically pull it and that's I, the only way you get it, it's good news because it's exactly, but when they mm -hmm. call guys, I'm telling you, if you just use the information I teach you how to do this, it's simple. Probate is just about having a long conversation with people and being a really good listener and not beat them up. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's why I'm so good at probates because I connect with people. I let them dump on me. I let them tell my story. And I, and I say, listen, I just want to help you out. Mm -hmm. what, okay. are your, what are your three biggest concerns? And then I just let them rattle it off and I help them out. And honestly, when I started out, I had no freaking idea what I was doing. I just went from a place as I'm going to connect with these people. Uh -huh. I'm not going to run them over. I'm not going to beat them up on price and I'm going to earn their trust. And once I earn their trust, then I'm, I'm going to walk through the qualification process and that's it. So my average County, I'll send out 60, 70 letters. Yeah. I get one or two phone calls. Yeah. It's the truth. Okay. But when I do those deals, I earn three to three and a half times the profit of our regular wholesaling deals. Mm -hmm. and that's why it's so, um, productive and it doesn't take a lot of your time. So, Remember earlier, I told you, you cannot scale probates. I've proven this. I yeah. tried it. I almost drove myself nuts. You're going to spend 20, 30 grand in staff and numbers. And it's like, you're just going to have to do so many deals. It's hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. And without that experience and not having a team, that's yeah. not where I want you to start going at. So you got to, if you can manually get it for your county, yeah, that's going to give you the best. The pre-probate, 
in your position, I'd probably do it like once a quarter. Just spray yeah. it. But every month, you're just going to, uh, by the way, if you do it every month, you're just mailing the exact, you're mailing or calling the exact same people over and over. The well, list only updates so much. Yeah. Well, well what I'm doing, because um, I've like totaled for the three counties here in Nebraska, there's like, I found like maybe 500 probates or whatever. And I haven't like, I, I mean, basically, I figure I'm just going to mail them once and hope that I get some something from them. But also, I was going to ask, um, because right now, it's like I really don't have the money to do driving for dollars. So uh -huh. other than the probates, what would probably be a better one for if I do through prop stream, like vacant properties or what? Like uh, Vacant vacant lists are absolutely wonderful. Okay. Um, I, I would definitely target on the vacants. Um, you can, uh, you can, you can, you can mix that up with the, uh, zombie properties on there, but mm -hmm. just go under the select filter and just see which one like rings best with you. But the, the reality is there's no wrong list to do, but I'm just telling you probates. Okay. If I thought I would tell everybody to do it, the pre probates is a strategy to find properties that aren't quite going to fit in the probate range, but there's a shot at it. Because yeah. a lot of properties get disqualified, trust, stuff like that. They're dynamite. Mm -hmm. But it's probates is it's it's not it's not really scalable. And trust me, guys, I've been doing this t over 20 yeah. years. I've never met anybody in the country that's gone. I, I do probates the entire country. Now, mm -hmm. some people specialize it, but here's the key in specializing in probates. Get one county, get it mastered, get a deal from it, then expand. If you try to hit five counties right off the bat, you're going to have five headaches on your head and you're not, it's tr and you're constantly trying to dial it in yeah. and move it from there. So what you want to use is use your prop stream. Do you know how many leads you can download a month for your 10, subscription? Yeah. So maximize it at the 10,000. Mm -hmm. Well, just right like now, yeah, right now I'm just looking for like uh, to get my first deal. And uh, cause I know I'm pretty much out in the middle of nowhere. I figure if, you know, if I just do, you know, a couple of deals for like, you know, 10 K or whatever, I can get moved to a much larger city. So I, what's your main uh, medium for contacting these people? Phone or? I, well, um, I used your probate letter template. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had, you know, had my number on it, all that stuff just yeah. presented. And then um, with some of the spouses, like if the spouse was like, you know, 60 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, sent a letter to, uh, one of the children and, uh, I, two people search, you know, has its problems, but it's still a pretty good service for free. Yeah. Um, so here's the challenge with prop stream. Yeah. They're not going to give you the executor or the PR, the personal yeah. representative. You're, you're just, you're not going to get that. And that's the key piece of information you need to connect with people to do a probate. So the, uh, the pre probate works fine, but just remember it's just kind of a spraying method and it works. I recommend it doing at least once a quarter. But every month, you're much better off going to the courthouse. Remember, it's part of our government list. It's an earned list. And you're going to have to go get it. Because once you get it, everything's hard up front, as I've taught in this entire live stream. Mm -hmm. But if you do that work, you set the, the, the procedures in place, your result's going to be much better at the end. Because here's the reality, and, and tell me if I'm right on this. Nick, is it super easy to go get the pre-probates through PropStream right now? It's almost too easy. Okay. So the whole, my whole mantra on this live stream is if it's too easy up front, it's going to be really hard on the back. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not discounting it. I love prop stream guys. It, it's a huge part of my business, but yeah. I understand its limitations in like probates and government lists. So whenever you can get a list straight from the source, that's it. Now I do, I still do a lot of high equity marketing. I do vacant properties, all that stuff. To me, it's too taxing, too time consuming. It's more expensive for me to hire an employee. That's where my $99 subscriptions to listrei.com comes in wonderfully because it's much cheaper an employee and it's a great efficiency of your time. But you got to stop trying to put that efficiency in every one of those. The government list, it will not work. So that's why me and Zach separate the government list so you understand to get highly targeted, target motivated sellers. And it's kind of a so, but the problem is, if, say I go get, a hundred probate leads. Well, if I want to do 10,000 leads in a month, I got to go get 9,900 9, more. At some point you do have to use a system to try to scale it, but it won't be with probates. Does it make sense to you, Nick? 
Yeah, it's, I was. I one of the reasons I moved on to trying to do the probates was I was just getting burned out on fisbos. Well, just, but the, the fisbos is like so, guys. So remember we talked about earlier. Fisbos aren't the easiest thing in the world either. You, you get you you got a property for sale, right? Kind of easy. You you have the number that they want to sell for, great, and you have the seller's phone number and name, right? And usually pictures. Sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. Perfect. The challenge is, why do they put it on for FISBO for nine times out of ten? Why do yeah. people do a FISBO? Yeah, because they're trying to get the most they can out of it. And, the, yeah. the original. and that's what you have to get through. So here's yeah. what I look at. I go, as someone that can go through a, a FISBO list, thousands of people, I like that person because they have the tenacity and the grit and they get wildly uncomfortable. But here's the crazy thing. Even though when it doesn't work out for you, it is a skill set that teaches you how to talk and communicate with people. Uh -huh. and, and it removes the fear of like being rejected. So even though say you made a thousand, two thousand points, you got rejected on every one of them. It, it, I'm building you up. And sometimes you don't even know it. You remember in the movie, uh, you remember in the movie Rocky, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you remember when his trainer, uh, they, they put him in like a pen area and he threw a chicken in there. What did Rocky say when he threw in the chicken? Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. Yeah, okay. So Rocky's like, what? I'm a boxer. Why is there a chicken? He goes, you got to catch the chicken. He's like, I need to learn how to box. Catch that chicken. I, and you're on your way to being a better boxer. He couldn't catch the chicken. Mm -hmm. He had to anticipate the chicken's move and do all sorts of stuff. At the end, of the, he, it took him like 10 minutes to catch the chicken, and he was exhausted at the end. And those were some of the techniques that taught him how to be a world champion. You ever watch the movie Karate Kid? Yeah. Yeah. Wax on, wax. Master, wax on, wax off. Why am I doing all this work? And at the end, he's just, all he's doing is teaching the discipline, the daily routine yeah. it requires to be a fighter. Mm -hmm. It is no different than wholesaling. Yeah. Why do you think I like the UFC and wrestling so much? Because the people that go in and put in the practice, they do the daily discipline, are the ones who are ready to show up for the war and take people on because they know they've prepared the absolute best. So look at when you make phone calls, it's like every call I make, I'm learning, I'm getting better. If you think you're burning out, you've got to kind of relook at it. Cause like when Zach first did cold calling, like we didn't even have a conversation until after his first 10,000. I'm just like, just do it. Cause I didn't have the experience doing it. I, I'm the first to admit it. But after 10,000, he goes, there's nothing someone can tell me on the phone that scares me. I am so much better than anybody else on the phone. Give me any phone. That's why he goes live and does this stuff with you guys because he's not scared. Do you? Now, he had the right attitude when he started out. But like inside, he didn't know what he was doing. And so he gained that skill set. So you guys, you have to understand some of the things we teach you. You don't even know why we're teaching you it. And sometimes you don't get it. Mm -hmm. But the more calls you make, it helps your experience level. Now, sometimes it works against you because you don't have the right attitude and you're using your old mindset to try to do this. And I want you to understand that is FISBOS is not the worst thing because it exposes you to a lot of different objections, what people say, and you learn how to connect with people. So have more fun with your FISBOS and be more free. Okay. But it's like, I agree. It's not easy, but like once you do that, because the minute you move to paid leads, Nick, you're going to have to be really sharp. Yeah. Because if a lead costs you $3,000, do you think you, you got time to go, uh, I, I, don't, uh, I, I don't know. Personally. You can do that on a FISBO all day long. Mm -hmm. When I started out holding, wholesaling, what people would do is I asked people for their bad leads. Give me your crappy leads, the ones you're going to throw away. Because they were free. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I, I had to like talk to thousands, meet with so many people to get a deal. But an old timer taught me, he goes, you're showing your tenacity to work through these leads and do it even though you suck at it shows me you're committed to this business. And I do the same thing with you guys. If you know it or not, I'm secretly messing with you to make you do the daily disciplines it's going to require to be successful at wholesaling. Mm -hmm. So many people today are looking for that quick hit, that shortcut, and I'm here to tell you, there isn't one. And if you think it's there, you are doomed to fail. So just yeah. don't be mm -hmm. worried about, so, like, so I'm gonna do one more thing, I'm gonna let you go, because I'm gonna talk to some sure. other people here. Remember in the beginning you said, how many phone calls till I get a deal on a probates? It's not the right question to ask. Okay. It's like, how many phone calls will I make to get a deal? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You should be excited about it. I go, it's going to be one or it's going to be 10,000. How's that? 
Okay. And if you go listen to after a thousand calls, if I can't get a deal, I'm out. You're done. Like yeah. you've already set a limit in your head and wholesaling is about removing all your barriers and your limitations that's got you to this yeah. point. So are you wildly uncomfortable yet? Or are you just uncomfortable? I, I'm pretty wildly uncomfortable because okay. I gotta, so, I, I'm, I'm wanting to make enough money so I can actually move to a better state because it's like it's 50 degrees outside and cloudy. It's like, <laughs> what that? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. It, it's yeah, not I like know, that. I know, exactly. You see I've that blue that, water and that's the ocean right there? It's beautiful. Dude, I didn't start out here. I didn't I start out found here. I have a friend in Jacksonville who she wants to also get into wholesale and she's going to try to help get me get the government list there. But yeah, it's like I am sick of Nebraska. So yeah, yeah. I got it. So listen, yeah. uh, do the work. He's back, yeah, by the way. Definitely. Do the work. Okay. Uh -huh. I started out in a tiny little efficiency when like, I started doing this stuff. Okay. So you just, you got to understand that's what you need to do. Okay. Yeah. Report back to me. We'll go from there. Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. I'll see you, man. Later. Right. If you're there. Yeah. Yes, I am. I How am you doing, man? Yeah. I'm all right. Very good. Thank you very much. I'm pretty excited about <laughs> being live. All right. Um, all right. Let's go. I'm, I'm connecting from Germany. Um, Excellent. What time is it there now? Uh, it's midnight. Okay. It's I, midnight I, I've time. talked to you before, haven't I? Uh, no. I sent some couple of messages, uh, you know, I like asked questions, but we didn't have any, any chance to talk directly. I got so, it. Um, yeah, then I thought maybe tonight I would have a chance to talk. Um, okay. You're all set, man. Shoot away. So basically, you know, um, I, I, I studied the, like almost the whole course, the freewholesaling.com. And then, you know, um, watch a couple of different videos from different uh, teachers, gurus and everything. Um, so I decided to, do, you know, start um, a virtual wholesaling business uh, from Germany. And I made it like a verbal agreement with, uh, with uh, some VAs abroad. Mm -hmm. It's like a company, um, train people, um, like uh, call callers, acquisition managers and dispo. Um, because I have a full-time like sales job mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the money I make per hour is much more than, than I would pay for them. So That's my fine. question is, uh, so I'm a U.S. resident, but I'm, I, I live in Germany. I can you know, go to the United States a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. So the question is, okay, so like I formed these companies, um, I hire these people, let's say I uh, launch a website, the question is, I picked the market Dallas for, for, you know, and this is why I have a friend there who can help me maybe, you know. Perfect. To, to do some help. Mm -hmm. So where should I start? Like, um, okay, I don't have a chance to go to the courthouse, uh, you know, to, to pull these government lists. But uh, if I'm supposed to use, for example, a tool like a prop stream, mm -hmm. where should I start? Because I'm going to pay these guys. Okay, pick up the phone and call, call, call. Where should I start and where do you see the, the highest chance for a virtual wholesaler, you know, someone, you know, located in a different state, different country? Um, so, I mean, you got a lot of fires here, so I, I can only do like one at a time. So you're in the right spot. So just so you know, free wholesaling is to teach you to understand the mechanics and how to go out and get a wholesale deal, which I believe you're trying. I understand you're trying to scale it and, you, and you're, you're in another company and you got a, a good paying job and you want to keep it. And by the way, that's how I started out wholesaling. I just didn't do it from Germany. So that I, I get a little bit of your limitation there with it because it's, it's going to be hard to pull some of the government list because you get a lot of resistance just sending emails and phone calls. So someone like you, I would use a prop stream to help facilitate the leads. You need to do at least your 10,000 leads. What leads you want to focus on? I, I, I don't hold anything back in freeholesaling.com. I don't have like a shield behind the course. I, I'm going to chase, uh, you can hit your pre-probates, your vacants, and then from there, you can do your tired landlords. And then I would focus on high equity leads. Mm -hmm. And I would still, have either yourself or a VA, try to get the government list that you can via phone. Mm -hmm. um, understanding it's going to be a challenge, but... 
Start from there and then you have to build a plan. And your plan has to be, if we have X amount of leads, how many people can we call? And you can build a business plan from there because you're a smart guy and you understand sales is you got to keep salespeople busy and you got to kind of give them the scripts and everything else you need to do. And that's where it's a much longer conversation. I probably can't cover in a few minutes on here, but the most important thing is to get them the list. The challenge with hiring VAs is some of them don't do what they say they're going to do. And it's frustrating and you have to manage these people. And sometimes when you don't have the experience to manage the people, that's where the frustration is. So do you, do you work as an independent salesperson or you work for like, do you have a sales team under you or how do you manage that part of your life? Uh, I work for a, a Nasdaq company. Uh, so it's an American company, but I run the, the sales operation here in Europe. Um, so it's a kind of busy job. Uh, I need to be online all the time. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I was trying to dig out some information about this wholesaling, creative financing. Um, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I kind of online met a, a, a VA company and then I talked to them and I had a, some kind of friend mentor. Uh, she told me that she was using this service. I, I listened to their calls. Um, and, you know, it's not uh, so expensive that I thought, okay, maybe it, it might be a way to kind of to start this as a, as a, as a side business and then see how uh -huh. it goes. And when it comes to that level, like 200, 300K a, a year, then I can just say, okay, I quit my job uh -huh. and purely focus on this. I got it. So my, my biggest, the biggest thing you're going to have to focus on right off the bat is the best quality leads because if you don't have good leads, you got the best sales team in the world, as you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're not going to convert. So you got to find the highest probability list. I teach you how to do it at freeholesaling.com. And honestly, um, me and Zach recently launched the Flip with Rick Plus if you need some more help because we, we go a lot more into how to teach your teams, especially VAs. And I offer all that. Scroll on the bottom if you want to check it out. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's not a requirement. But if you want to, like, when you start working with teams and everything else, there's a lot of things you got to manage and keep your eyes on the prize to make it work. But what I would solely focus on right now is the best list you can possibly get. And then how many leads do you need to do? How many realistic lead leads you need to do? So start asking the sales team that you're getting ready to work with, how many leads do you need in a month to keep it busy? And what's a realistic number? And just take it from their previous data and see if it adds up. So if they say, oh, I need 50,000 leads, you're going to have to like, uh-oh, 50,000 is a lot of leads. Mm -hmm. Like you, you got to be able to find a deal in 50,000. But the idea is like, what can we do with 10,000? How are you going to connect with these people? And then what's the cost going to be? And then you're going to have to just kind of work it out backwards from there. I'm, uh, initially, I'm going to hire like two cold callers, one uh -huh. acquisition manager and one dispo. And, and I today talked to the, you know, the my contact person from that uh, agency, I, I told her, okay, yeah. I think first of all, I should build a, a buyer's list. And mm -hmm. Let's start with a dispo. And this dispo is, is supposed to call the, uh, maybe the cash buyers that I can, uh, you know, uh, download from the prop stream and maybe just we Google it and then see cash buyers in Dallas and then call these people, introduce ourselves, see what they want, what they need. Mm -hmm. Do they want like three plus two or, you know four plus two whatever yeah. and then maybe once i have this cash buyers list and i see you know uh, these people like buying in these zip codes and these yeah. type of properties and then tell the call callers okay now that i pull a list and then i'm going to just ask yeah. them to call and then see how it goes and then once i have some leads then i will ask the acquisition managers to kind of call them and i can yeah. only do just like observe listen to the calls and then yeah. maybe give a feedback so I would, I would, let me ask you, how many hours, uh, I mean, how busy are you like at your current job? Like, are you like, are you done when you get home? Like you just have no time or? Um, once a week, um, once a week I, I go to the office, the rest yeah. of the time I'm home. I mean, I can do oh. other things, but you know, the more I work, the more, uh, cash I can generate I got it, I got for it. my company. It's like, a, so let, let me give you a couple of suggestions here. Okay. Yeah. You got to tax marketing and you got to get motivated sellers and you got to get them under contract. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's going to be the most challenging part of what you do. I wouldn't even bother with the dispositions till you start loading that funnel because you're, you're going to waste time and money because here's the reality is 
you already have some sales experience, you can actually have a VA help you just scrape cash buyers list. And then one, maybe like an hour a week, one hour, maybe two, you can rip mm -hmm. through cash buyers. You can build that data yourself. And then you can easily, if you have a good deal, they sell very easily. You're not going to have enough volume for a dispositions person right off the bat. It's usually a 60 mm -hmm. to 90 day ramp up. So I'd rather you spend your energy and your focus. I'd rather you have like just complete dedicated cold callers. And with somewhat your sales experience, you got great English skills. So there's no issue there. But dispositions is a very limited time. It's, it's not like a heavy skill set. Like it, it's the, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's kind of the easiest part of the job. You can do what you want, but I'm telling you, I would put everything on the front end on marketing. So mm -hmm. if you're going to do two cold callers, you could probably spend some more money on getting quality list or having somebody help you getting the list. And then your focus has to be on the marketing team and the act, uh, the people reaching out to all these people. That's mm -hmm. where it really has to be. The dispositions, honestly, like I, we always use that as the last one. Now, mm -hmm. anybody can build a cash buyers list, but like you for to get people excited about dispositions, you have to have product to sell. And until you have product, you're kind of putting the cart before the horse. But if you want, just check out Flip with Rick Plus if you need some more extended training on it because it, it, it's a much longer sure. conversation. But I yeah. would focus everything on marketing and getting deals under contract because you could turn a dispositions person on like this. It's easy. It's actually really simple. Uh, we get dispositions people all the time in markets like we've never even done a deal with. And sometimes we just don't have people or the staff's busy. And our worst case scenario is me and Zach occasionally start to pick up the phone and just rip through it. It's not that hard. Here's the, mm -hmm. you have to have good deals to sell. So if you have to sell it like a realtor, that's your, that's realtor experience. So my suggestion to you, you've got a lot to chew on here is load the front end and then you can bring some of it to the back end as you get going in the business. But if you can't get that engine running, you don't have to worry about dispositions. That's like, I'm going to hire an accountant before I've even started. Like I go, let's get some sa sales. Let's get some, some wholesale deals because hiring an accountant, if there's, no revenue coming in. They're just going to sit there and fumble their thumbs and they'll be happy to take your, your paid paycheck. Does that make sense mm -hmm. to you? Yes, it I'm makes sense. You, I'm just, yeah, I'm just I'm afraid like of you, like... You're looking at it from a business, but I'm telling you, you've got to front load the end of like the front end of wholesaling. That's why all our trainings, everything's around marketing, getting lists and, and talking to sellers because that's the hardest part of what we do. And if you do that right, the selling part, it's it's actually easy. It's going to be the smallest amount of your time. I'm not discounting it, but I'm telling you a little bit of the mountain you got to climb up front. I want to give you as much help and as much push as you can. And then you can turn disposition people on very easily. Very, very easily. I think it will be easy like once I have a property under contract and then and then I'm like, oh, what I'm going to do now and tell the dispo, okay, call these numbers and this dispo is just like cold, cold host and and yeah. just offers it. Yeah. And you can give them a flat rate. You can give them a, a percentage. They're, they're, they're really like a, a dispo. Is, it's simple. And here's how you make dispo even easier. Find really good deals. How do you find deals? You get the right list and you get the right people with the energy to contact these people. If it's not yourself, I understand. Dispo is easy. When you get bad deals, bad deals, dispo is a nightmare. Why? Because nobody wants to buy it. Like you can't make people buy property. And we're not realtors to sell stuff for top dollar because most of the properties you're buying are not top dollar properties. So how do you prevent that? Go off to the right list and get the people that are going to put a lot of energy on getting the best deals possible. The Dispo, worst case scenario, you could start off doing it and then you could easily outsource it very fast and simply. The front part, if you don't build that part, the back end is just a waste of your time. And I'm just telling you, don't put the cart before the horse. Load the front end, sales, marketing, get it going. And then the dispo, um, I've never had a challenge hiring a dispo. The, the other side, it's, it's always work. And that's what you're going to find. So that's where I want you to focus. No, I, mean, I, have, I have everybody like I okay. have. the. So, but the, the question is like, should I ask the dispo to call these uh, cash buyers? Maybe like, I mean, the, the, the dispo can work part time, like two or three days, just call these people. Uh, let's have a list of like 50 cash buyers. And then, bum, and a full gas marketing. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, just try it. That's all I can tell you is, is get going. But I'm just telling you, the initial mm -hmm. thing is to really entice the cash buyers, you're going to have to have product for them. 
And if you don't have product, they'll turn over and you'll be kind of wasting your time. So just mm -hmm. make sure you have product because once you have product, then it's really easy to entice cash buyers. If you have no product, you, you like, so if somebody calls me and goes, Hey Rick, I, I got some great wholesale deals. I'm like, hey, what's the address? Like, well, I'm working on it. I'm like, okay, well call me when you get something. I'm not going to go through that. Your mm -hmm. entire qualifying. Like, why am I going to give you all my information if you have nothing? Because here's what I'm telling you is, I don't know if you can actually do this. So prove to me you can do it. And then we'll have a deeper conversation. Now, when you have a property to dangle in front of me, I will give you everything you want. But I, I've done this for a while. So it's like, remember, I don't want you to set that person up for failure. And when I say part-time, it's extreme part-time. One to two days at most. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, in, in two hours, you can get through any type of list call. That's it. Because a lot of it's just phone tag playing back and forth. So just make sure you understand that. All right, cool. My final question. Um, yes. Do you think it's important to have a website, like a professional website, before really no. like... Waste of time. It doesn't... Dude, I don't have one, and I do wholesaling. How's that? Mm -hmm. Now, I will tell you, um, if you want to show credibility, simple Facebook pages, Instagram, social media, and that's easy to have a VA set up for you. Mm -hmm. The sooner you set up, that's fine. But like... People just don't go hunt websites anymore. They look you up online and go, okay, where can I find them? So uh, some simple parameters in Google setting up like a business um, and just, you know, like some of the keywords, but like the actual website, they're becoming not l less relevant. It's just, you could get instant credibility having a, a, like a Facebook page and that would serve to go, oh, okay, he's got, I see there. And then the idea is when you buy or sell a property, have somebody put a comment on there and just post an occasional article on it. It's going to get more traction than just a website because it's got no, <laughs> it's got no SEO. And unless you tell them the domain, they're never going to go there. So if mm -hmm. I want to look you up, I'm going to put you on and, and I'm going to do a search in social media. And that's the first place I'm going to hunt you down. So I would mm -hmm. start with there and then just don't not complicate. A, all you need is like one simple page saying what you're doing because I'm, Every investor goes out and gets these cookie cut websites and they're all the exact same information. It's like ridiculous. I'm not going to use names and stuff here, but mm -hmm. people don't care. They're going to go to Facebook and Instagram much faster than they go hunt for a domain. Okay. And does it make sense to, for example, if, if, a, if a seller is not interested in, in a cash offer and then suddenly like change the strategy and then offer creative financing, do you recommend this? Because this is something like I kind of feel it might be necessary. You can, but it, the right opportunity has to present itself. You can't just say, hey, do you want to do creative financing? Number one, they don't even know what that is. So um, always wear your wholesaling cap first. And then if the terms dictate, just say, listen, it's a lot of times creative financing. A good creative financing is the only solution. Okay. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can't make people do a wholesaling deal. It's even more critical in creative financing. You can't make somebody sell you a property. So you do the whole price terms thing. And so you just list them out and it's as simple as saying, are you open to a creative solution? You want them to have some sort of problem that you can solve. Maybe they owe too much money on the property. Maybe they own it outright and they want to avoid taxes. And that's where you just, you have to ask an open-ended question because trying to shove creative financing down someone's mouth that wants nothing to do with it, mm -hmm. <laughs> ticks them off. And if you don't believe me, try working with realtors. They hate it the most because they don't understand it and they fear what they don't understand. And so it has to present the right opportunity by saying, Hey, do you want to do creative financing? They're like, I, what, what is it? Is that like a dance? What is that? They don't understand it. That's terminology you and me use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if someone ha owes a ton of money or they're behind on payments and we can't make the wholesale numbers work, I just simply say, Hey, are you open to a creative solution? And I shut my mouth and they're like, mm -hmm. well, what do you mean by that? Like, can you explain a little bit more? I go, well, I, you know, I noticed I have the problem here. I go, I get it. I, I can't buy it cash because of this, this, and this. But if you're open to being creative, I might be able to solve your problem. Would you like to discuss it? See, you can't move forward until you have permission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just doing little things like that. If you want to learn like some more advanced topics, I mean, I teach a lot of it in free wholesaling. There's plenty there. If, if you want to take it a step up, check out the plus yeah. and we'll see if we can do something with you yeah, there. With the, with the plus, like, uh, is it possible to uh, the communicate on a daily basis like uh no, no, it's not daily so just to let you know the plus is just a, a way to connect with me and zach go a little bit deeper but we're looking to work long-term relationships so when you have mm -hmm. questions we can set the time aside to answer them for you 
So it's not like a dedicated mentoring coaching thing. It's just like we, we made it affordable for everyone, the people that want. So sometimes people have to ask a question. And what the best way to work with us that is if you JV a deal with us, it's free. It's free. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. So look into it. You have options. I think you got some decisions to make and move forward and we can continue the conversation. You're welcome to do it on here. We're on live all the time. And if you want to go on the other side, just understanding the flip with Ruckus is used to expand the relationship because mm -hmm. I believe wholesaling is a thing you learn, you get better and you're better. And as you get better, we can do better deals together. And if that's what people want to do and they want to step it up, I'm fine with it. And I want to work with you, but it's not a requirement. It's definitely not a requirement. I've made it more affordable than any other program out there. It's there. It's just an extension. People ask it, how can we build more of a relationship with you? Kind of come up with what was the balance between time, energy, and what we want to accomplish. Our main goal is to teach you guys to get started, getting to do the deals. And then as you maybe Okay, guys. Sorry about that. Okay. So, guys, I'm on this camera. Guys, this is Rick Ginn. Um, I appreciate you guys watching in. I am going to wrap this up. I got to get somewhere, and I'm running a little bit over time. Listen, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you smash that like button. And Zach, I will be on later this week. we on tomorrow, and we'll connect there. Guys, make sure you subscribe. I appreciate your time, and I will see you in the next broadcast. See you guys.